Good morning, beautiful people, and welcome to the School of the Spirit. The School of the Spirit in Oak House Church is popularly known as the Sunday School. Kindly join us as we dig deep into the Word of God this morning. Praise and glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so today um, I'm going to look at, uh, we're going to discuss. How to know, how we may know of God for our lives. Remember the Bible says in Ephesians 2.10 that we are God's workmanship that are created in Christ unto good works, which God ordained before, but with God before ordained that we should walk in it. So there is um, the word of God made us to understand that the body of Jesus Christ is one, but is made up of different members, and um, each and every one of us is part of that body. And God gave us a very perfect example of how the body works. The body is not just one whole. <clears throat> the body is made up of different parts. If you look at your body, you discover that there are, even do, there are some that you don't even know that is in your body. Some of them are inside. Some are outside. And not one single aspect that is not as critical in its importance as the other. All of the members of the body are very effective. It is on the basis of that, that kind of picture God paints to use it to explain to you because Jesus Christ always used the things we can relate to it, the things we can see to teach us about spiritual things. That's why you, you see about the parable of the kingdom or the kingdom of God is like this, the kingdom of God is like that. So he used the things that we can relate with very well to be able to explain to us how the things we cannot see function, that kingdom. There is a kingdom of this world, the kingdom that you can see. <coughs> and there is a kingdom of heaven the one we cannot see. There is a function that goes on there. So each and every one of us is made up of um, that kingdom. So you are designed and wired for a particular job and assignment. You contribute to the body. So you cannot be a member of the body without performing your duty or your function. So this morning, uh, we're going to have it as a discussion. So I want to start by asking, there is a first in the process of discovering the purpose for which God called you, the purpose for which God created you. There is a process in finding out what it is as revealed in the Word of God. So, what is the first step? Who knows, who can tell us, who can suggest, who can think, who can hazard? The very first Uh, yeah, we are talking about we now, members of we, talking about the members of the body. You cannot be, you cannot be an unbeliever and be a member of the body. 
So for you to be a member of the body means you have been fully initiated into the body of Christ through being born again, water baptism, Holy Ghost baptism, partaking of the communion. Now you are a member. So how do you discover your assignment in the body? What is the very first step you take? The first thing you must know. We find it in Romans chapter number 12, verse 1. That is the first step in discovering the call of God in one's life. You know, the will of God is revealed in his word. <coughs> Excuse me. The will of God is revealed in his word. So you go to the word of God because everything that has to do with life, God has given to us. Everything that pertains to life and godliness. <coughs> Excuse me. Through the knowledge. The knowledge of God and his word. So we go to the word of God and we see the first thing that he said. He said, I beseech you, brethren. The word beseech is, I earnestly plead with you. It was an earnest pleading. I earnestly plead with you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, having shown you mercies, in saving you, in Jesus Christ dying and going to the cross, forgiving us our sins, justifying us by making us his righteousness in Christ and all of that. Remove all those bottlenecks and all that. And the handwriting that is against us, that is written against us, he nailed them to his cross, taking it out of the way. So we can now be free. So he says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Present your bodies. How? A living sacrifice. One, two, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Another translation said that is your first service. That's where the service begins. If you're not, if you can't present your body, because the reason why it has to be so is um, let's look at what he said in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. He said, Nevertheless, the foundation of God does what? Standard sure. Having this seal. There's a seal. The Lord knows them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ, do what? Depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Because if you are of dishonor, God is not going to use you. See what he said in verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, separated, and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work which God ordained from the foundation of the earth that we should walk in it. So the first step is that this your body must be presented what? 
Because you are not going to use an unholy vessel to serve God. Everything that is in the house of God, in the Old Testament, the Bible says they have to be purified before they are used for the service of God. So you being a vessel must be clean to start with. You must be clean to start with. So, you cannot be using your body for unholy service and you say you want to serve God. You can't be wearing bikini. And then putting holes on your nose and your knees and your ears and everywhere. I say you want to serve God. This your body must be presented holy. A living sacrifice, not a dead sacrifice. Living. So that is the first. If you are not living a holy life, God can't use you. If you don't present your body holy, God cannot use you. Is that clear? Is that clear? So the first step of finding out the will of God for your life, the first step in finding out the purpose and plans of God for your life, the first step in discovering the reason why God created you and kept you alive today, the very first step, having been born again, is to do what? Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. You can't use this, your body, to do anything that is unholy, anything that is unclean. And you've seen, you've seen it again in 2 Timothy 2.20. You see, if anyone purge himself from this, uh -huh, you cannot be prepared, sanctified, for the master's use. So that is the first. The second, what's the second step? Having presented your body now. So you begin to make sure your life, your body, the things you do with your, you no. Know, the body, is, you cannot be committing fornication, sleeping around, lying and cheating and doing and say you want to serve God. You can't serve God now. That's why the standard of God is different from the world. Is that clear? So the second. We're talking about finding the reason why God, because it's very important. Remember, you're going to give an account to God at the end of the journey, of your journey stay here on earth. You will give an account to you will surely give an account. Whether you believe it or you don't believe it, you know it or you don't know it. I've said, if you want to find out the will of God, go to his word. His word is, reveals his will. So what is the second? What do you consider to be the second step? So what is the second step? Second step. And what is the second step? The, what do you consider to be the second step? Second, which one? The,
Uh, give him NKJV. He said he wants NKJV, so give him. Let's go to Romans 12, 2. Number two, he says, and be not conformed to this world. That's the second step. In other words, love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. Come out from among them and be ye what? Separate and touch not unclean things, and I will receive you, and I will be your father, and you will be my sons and my daughters. So, having, having presented your body a living sacrifice to God, you come out from the world. With the other, you can't find God's will. Because friendship with the world, that's why he say, and be not, after the first one, he say, and, which means the second, and be not conformed to this world. Do not join the world. Do not live according to the dictates and all that of the world. You have to come out from among them. First John 2, 15, 16 says, do not love the world, nor the things that are in the world. In James 4.4, 4, he said for friendship with the world is an enmity with God. So you come out from among them. Is that clear? We are talking about how you will know what God has called you to become a life. Has he called me into prayer ministry? Has he called me into pastoral ministry? Has he called me into help ministry? Has he called which, what did he call me? What did he design me to be? How you find out, number one, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Number two, do not conform to the pattern and dictates of the world. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Okay? Yeah, come out with sanctification. The first one is presenting your, now that you are saved. Give me Romans chapter 6. Let me show you. Romans chapter 6 verse... Um, you can start from 6, 7, 8. Romans 6, 6. He said, 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. 9. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, died no more. Death had no more dominion over him. Okay. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he lived, he lived unto God. Likewise, reckon, your, reckon ye also yourself to be what? Dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God, through Jesus our Lord. Let no sin therefore reign in your mortal body. In other words, present it a living sacrifice to God. That you should obey it in the lusts, 
thereof. Verse 13. Neither yield your members as instrument of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instrument of righteousness unto God. <clears throat> for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under the grace. What then shall we say, because we are not under the law, but under the grace, God forbid, and all of that. So what he's saying here is that, first, you offer your body, because anyone you present your bodies to, the person you become a servant to, that person, and you become a slave to that person. So the first thing you do is that this, your body must be offered as a sacrifice. You know how they make sacrifices in the your deities and all of that. That's how you sacrifice. You present your body now, you come. Lord, I offer my heart. I offer my spirit, soul, and my body. I offer them unto you. And having offered your body now, the next thing that you do, you will cut off any contamination from any contamination with the world because is, you remember what you read in 2 Timothy? He said, in a greater, there are vessels of honor and some. There are vessels of gold and silver and all that. Some to honor and some to dishonor. If you cleanse your body and all of that from all this, God become, God, you become sanctified and prepared for the master's use unto every good work. So, present your bodies. There are things you cannot look at. This your there are things you cannot look at. There are things you cannot listen to. There are places you cannot go. This your body because it's a living sacrifice. Because it's alive, it's not dead. It's still moving around. There are places you cannot go. There are things. There are things you cannot eat. Things that are stolen, bribe. There are things you cannot do with this, your body. That's presenting it. And then the next one is, uh, do not conform to the system. There is a system in the world. There is a, a life pattern. There is a pattern of life that they live in the world. You don't join them. You don't live like the world. You are a Christian. You are born again. You have a different lifestyle now. You have to learn the life of the kingdom. He said, do not conform to the world. Don't give bribe, neither receive bribe. Don't, don't be politically correct and economically wrong. You know those political right on all those things are nonsense they coin in the world and all of that. And we have bought their language. Today the church has entered the world and the world has entered the church. So there's no difference. They lie, we lie. They steal, we steal. They defraud, we defraud. The laws and the commandments of God, we don't keep them. You want to get married, you just join to a girl. You go to the law courts, do, do court wedding and all of You start living together as husband and wife. These are the world thing. We don't, he said, do not conform to the world. It's a pattern, the system of the world, the lifestyle, the way they live. Don't join them living that kind of, that's what it means. So the first one is present your body. Number two, the system of the world. Don't join. That's why he said, do not conform. Then the third one is what? Uh -huh. You now subject yourself to the renewing of your mind. Because, see, if you do not present your body a living sacrifice, if you do not conform, if you do not separate yourself from the system of the world, and you are reading the Bible, and you are studying the Bible, and you are reading the Bible, and you are coming to church, 
It is as good as not coming to church. It is as good as doing nothing. It will not profit you anything. It will not benefit you anything. You are turning the whole thing upside down. You are just nothing at all. You will never, ever discover the will of God for your life. You will never, ever find God's purpose for your life. No matter what you do. All your life and everything is about what to eat and what to drink. Struggle continues from this to another one and that. That's where how you live your So the next thing, that's why he said, as a newborn babe, before you begin to desire the sincere milk of the world so that you can grow, that's feeding on the word of God to renew your mind. What did he say you should do? Lay aside. If you don't lay aside, malice, guy, hypocrisies, evil speakings, if you don't let them go, if you don't reject them and throw them away from your life, and you say you are, you are, you are reading the Bible, you are coming to church and hearing the word of God and all of that, it won't profit you. That is why you see people, they've been born again for 30 years and all of that. If you look at them, their life is empty. They still don't know. Somebody has been born again for 30 years. He doesn't know what is the will of God for his life. He doesn't know God's purpose and plan for his life. Anything goes. And you know, that's the problem. So the first one is that you present your body a living sacrifice. Number two, do not join the system of this world. Don't join them and call white black and call black white. Always speak the truth from your heart. That is, let your yes be your yes, your no be your no. The third one is, you now begin to feed on the word of God. That is when the word will now walk. That's when the word will walk. That's when that word will now begin to open your eyes. God will begin to speak to you through his word. You begin to hear the word of God. You begin to hear the spirit, the Holy Spirit of God speak. If you don't do this, and you come up tomorrow and say, God told you, God told you, God told you, God said to me, all I need to do is that I just observe your life and to know whether you are hearing from God or you are hearing from yourself. Because if you don't present your body a living sacrifice, you have not come out from the system of this world and all of that. How will God be talking to you? The fourth one. So who can tell us the fourth one? I've told you this, the precept Step upon step, line upon line. If you follow this pattern, you will find God's will for your life. This thing that I'm telling you is what I did. I didn't hear, I didn't hear at any time, my son, my son, I've called you to be a prophet or to be a pastor or to do this. Or, I didn't hear nothing. If you ask my wife, she will tell you she herself did not hear anything. Thank God for those who say, that the Lord spoke to me while I was doing this. Say, go and do this for me. And uh, thank God for them. I don't have any problem. But I'm talking about Peter, I'm joining Peter. Peter said, we were in that holy mount with him. When we heard that excellent voice from glory, that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. He said, but we have a more excellent word of prophecy. The one that is authentic, that is sure. 
the world. That's the one I think I hold on to. Because the things I hear, there are so many voices in the air. There are many voices. There are many voices speaking. And it will take somebody whose spirit is sharp, receptive, to be able to pick the right signal. If not, you'll be picking. Have you ever tuned your TV? You want to, to search your channel. You see so many whatever are coming in. And then it is that your search engine that is in your whatever that will now pick the particular one that the, the, the major uh, uh, subscriber, I mean, um, 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 provider is supplying to you. You will be able to take all those other ones away and pick that one. But if you don't do that, you'll be picking so many things in the air in the name that God is speaking. We hear a lot of things God is said, God is said, God is said. At the end of the day, you find that it is not good because the things that God has said is clear. So this is the reason why your body is not presented a living sacrifice. You have not come out of the system of this world. You are so following there. A lot of people are born again, but they are, mind, they are not yet out of the system. They are still inside the system. You need to come out. And then you begin to feed on the word of God that is able to build you up. It is in that second part, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, he said, but, but be ye transformed. So transformation comes by the renewing of your mind. It is in the process of renewing your mind so that you may prove, have you seen now, you will be able to prove that which is good. You may be able to prove that which is acceptable. You may be able to prove that which is the perfect will of God. Now, for you to land in the perfect will of God, because you're going to start from the good, acceptable, and then the perfect. How do you transcend from good and acceptable and to the perfect? We'll find the answer in Matthew 20, Matthew 20, 24. <clears throat> it was a story about uh, the mother of James and John. He came to Jesus Christ and um, he wanted to secure their destiny to make sure that because she has seen that this thing these people are doing is be like say the thing is working <laughs> so let me go and secure my there were 12 apostles so let me go and secure look at what the woman did he said to Jesus let he didn't even say let one of my son he said let the two of them one be on your right and then the other one on the other. what about the rest what about others? <laughs> hey. So, and he said unto her, What will thou? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one at thy right hand and the other on the left. Where? In your kingdom. Not minding about this other. And that thing created a problem, serious problem among the disciples. They started quarreling. They started fighting it. And then Jesus answered and said, You know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? They say unto him, Yea, we are able. That is James and John. He said, Yes, we are able. We will drink it. Will. He said, Okay, no problem. And he said unto them, You shall drink indeed my cup and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them of whom it is prepared of my Father. They're talking about heaven at the end of the day. But now, 
when and when the ten had it, that is the rest of the ten, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. They were not happy. But Jesus called them unto him and said, You know that the princes of the Gentiles do what? Exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. 26. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your what? Your servant or your minister. And whosoever shall be chief among you, let him be your servant. So where you, when you are studying the word of God, you are getting your mind renewed, being able to discern what is good, the acceptable, is a journey. So where you start is service. And that's why I keep telling you, as long as your life, as long as anything that you do is to come to church on Sunday, and then when they share the grace, you go home. The will of God you will never know. If you like, go and fast until all the hairs on your head will fall off. If you like, go and fast until you develop ulcer. You won't find it. You must follow this pattern. Luke chapter 16, verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is what? Least. Is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is also just, is unjust in the much. Let me say, when you now, what you do is that you start from the known to the unknown. Because you are searching for the perfect will of God for your life. So you start from the known. What is the known? Join any of the departments. I'm telling you what I did many years ago. What I did was I offered my, but when I got born, before I got born again, I smoked, I drink, I make trouble. I have very, very bad friends. I was planning on joining cult while I was in the school. One day, I tried Igbo. I smoked once. I started hearing voices. It was in the night like this, around 10 o'clock in the night in my room in the school. The guy, my roommate, is a very bad boy. He gave me one, I smoked it. I smoked, when I, just one drop, I smoked it. Eh? I was hearing voices. Somebody was knocking at the door. I got up. I said, can't you hear something? And I was hearing it. No, I'm not joking. I was hearing call, 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 call on the door. I was telling them, can't you hear somebody knocking at the door? They were laughing at me. I said, what is the problem with you? I got up, went to the door, opened the door. I didn't see anybody. Hearing voices. So when I got born again, I stopped drinking. I stopped smoking. I stopped all those whatever. I cut off from their lifestyle. Came out from among them. That was when I told you, when one day I went to visit a sister in a hostel. <coughs> The students, we have, the students that time, the school had written their exam. You know, after you finish the semester exam, a lot of people have gone, the rooms are vacant. Sometimes you enter some room, one person is there or two, or sometimes nobody. So I entered this one. The lady that followed me up when I got born again, 
Her name was Zuche, or is Zuche, I don't know whether she's still there. So I came and sat down there. I was gissing, you know, no, I did nothing. We are just gissing and gissing and gissing and gissing and gissing. You know, the doors to the room were locked. They put on the light and all of that. We are gissing and gissing and gissing. I didn't know that the lady knew that it was very dark and she didn't want to tell me. I was lost in the gist. So after some time, I realized that, ah, it should be late. So I look, I opened the window, looked through the window. Everywhere was pitch dark. <coughs> With the speed of light, pew! I flew. It's a one-story building. I flew. The name of the hostel is Mary Slesser. I don't know those of you who are in the Nsuka, Mary Slesser. I flew boom, to the door. They've locked the door of the hostel, the female hostel. The door has been locked and it can never be opened until the following day. I came back to that room, depressed. That's how I stayed in the room like this. So I didn't sleep in the night, waiting for the time they are going to open the hostel door, when the portal will open. So the moment I started hearing cree, cree, cree on the whatever, I sneaked down. I wanted, immediately I saw the whatever. I wanted the, the guy, the porter pursued me, rushed me. If you see what I did there, eh? I pushed him, I forced myself, I, I ran, he pursued me. I entered my room that morning, early in the morning. I felt that I had drank, I felt like drinking poison and dying. I couldn't pray, I couldn't do nothing. I was like it in her room till the following morning. But when I go back to my hostel, I couldn't eat, I couldn't drink, I couldn't play, I couldn't do nothing. I felt I was already in hell. <coughs> Until I met one of my brothers again in the fellowship. His name is um, Okudeli. I told him the things that happened to me. He gave me a very wise counsel that comforted me. He said, the reason why I'm feeling like this is because I have the Holy Spirit in me. He said, before I got born again, if, if I did that, would I be bothered? I said, no. He said, so, he just to show you that you're fine and all of that. He prayed with me and so I was very happy and I moved on. So, that's what I'm telling you. The first thing that you do in finding the will of God for your life, in knowing what God called you to do, so that the grace of, there is a grace, there is grace over your life. is waiting for you to key into the call of God for your life and that is start happening. But as long as you are church, Sunday, Sunday church person, you will go to hell. Oh. I am not joking, I am very serious about it. You will go to hell when the time comes. But the part of the hell you are going to find yourself is what the Bible calls what? The outer darkness. When the day I have time, I'm going to go through it again and open the scriptures and show you. Christians that do not live their life the way God is designed for them to live and all of that, you are going to find yourself in the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. And that should not be your portion. Nobody should desire to go there because that place is, is hell. You know, I told you hell has different compartments. Nobody should desire to find yourself there. If you, because you can't be a member of the body and then you are not walking. Your member, the members of your body, the hand and all, every part of your body is walking, contributing to the overall growth of your body. The same way you are a member of the body of Christ. You cannot be idle in the church. Woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. You know, we keep saying this, and we finish saying it, you go back and continue as nothing happened. My hands, Paul said, I've been with you for these years and all of that, and I'm about to go. He said, nobody's blood will be found or required from me. My hands are clean from your blood and all of that. Go read it in the Acts of Apostles chapter 20. So you will not say, he said, I've declared to you all the whole counsel of God. I have made them available. It is your choice. Some of you will take it, some of them will not. You just continue your life as if nothing has happened. That's no problem. But me, I have done my part. Give me verse 12. 
Can we read it together? One, two, go. Who can give you your own? If you are not faithful in that, that is, he's talking about service. To give you your own now is when you now finally find the will of God for your life. See what I did. I got born again. I offered my body a living sacrifice. I told you when I got born again, I didn't miss one fellowship till I left school. Well, not one day. I offered my body a living sacrifice. I com- my life is from lecture hall to my hostel to fellowship, back to my hostel to classes, back to my hostel to fellowship. That's how I live my triangular life. That's what I, how I lived. I came out from among them. All those my friends and all of cut all of them off. I don't have any didn't have anything to do with them again. And then the next thing that I did, I began to study the word of God. If you see my Bible, if you see my King James Bible, there's no page there that was not marked. And that is another sign that you are called. You begin to study the word of God every time. And prayer, combining it with prayer. Then I can stand, I can pray and pray for two, for three hours, for four hours, for five hours, for six hours, non-stop at a stretch. Constantly devouring the word of God. Then the next thing that I did, that is why I told you, in the fellowship, there is no department in the fellowship that I didn't join. No department. I sang in the choir. I carried equipment. I did ushery. I did follow up. Name them. I joined. I was in the prayer department. I was even a, the coordinator of the intercessor and all of that intercessory team. I joined all of that. That is moving from one department to another and all of that. <coughs> it was in the process. It just dawned on me. I find that man. And when, when God begins to lead you, because he is the one that will lead you from the good will to the, to the acceptable, to the perfect will. And when he brings you there, people will begin to see you. It's not just, they will be confirming what is already in your heart. He will direct your heart. If you're meant, if you're supposed to be, you can start from the choir, that does, or maybe instrumentalist, or maybe the choir. That does not mean that that is the beginning and end of it. It is, you have to start from somewhere. And then he will be leading you, he will be leading you, he will be leading you. My own, it's not that uh, I felt that uh, these people are not serious, I left them. That is not it. Because that's what some of you do. Or maybe you quarrel with your leader or whatever, you say you don't want that, then you leave. And uh, that is not it. You are not faithful. It was because I was in choir. I told you how I, was, how I sank myself away from choir. It was this, my wife. But when they start like this, I would join a whole microphone. You can imagine me in the choir. There are two of them, one other lady, which are 20. So one day they call, two, we are two in the choir, me and um, Prince, his name is Prince. He called, they called both of us. Yeah, there is something that they, the Lord is telling them to share with us. Because once you say the Lord is telling you, my, you made my day. He say, you brothers are very wonderful brother, that God will bless you for the kind of thing that you people are doing in the choir. In fact, eh, you are a great blessing. He say it's just that they believe that God is leading us to join the prayer department that, so that we can, where God is lifting us. I say, eh. So God actually promoted us from singing to intercessory department. <laughs> Meanwhile, the reason why 
this my wife and that or he's telling us that God has promised is so that we can leave them. So that when they want to sing, they can because we sing often. The key we are croaking, our voice is like toad. We are croaking, they will just be wandering and and they cannot tell us to stop. <coughs> so they found the wise way to lay us off. I join intercessors. <laughs> From carrying equipment. When enough hands now came to carry equipment and all of that, I now moved and joined choir. He said, hey, you are not a choir. Go to prayer. That's where God is lifting you. I join intercessors. <coughs> it is in the process of all this I found if you are not faithful in that which is Another man, your own. See me today. I am doing exactly, I am in a position what God created me, Fred, in this life to do. That is what I am doing. I, you know, I was a, I am trained as a veterinary doctor. I read veterinary medicine in the University of Nigeria. When I finished, to show you what go, what's going on. When I finish, I wanted to, because I have a very big penchant for livestock farming and all of that. I love it a lot. It's my, my passion. I went into it. Pursued it. Till today. You know how I bought an acre, two acres of land and all of that, even in Ibadan. When I did, was in Abuja, it was wahala, one problem to another problem to another problem to another problem. I never made any money. Because God is calling me. To, nothing else you will do will work. Nothing else you will do will work until you find yourself in that place where God calls you. If you like, believe it. If you don't like, leave it. One day, you're going to die. Either Jesus calls for rapture or he calls you home. It is appointed unto man to die once. And when it is done, you're going to stand. I sent you here to do X, Y, Z account. That day, you will be speechless. Because you can't defer, you can't answer. What will be, you know what will make you speechless? This thing that we've been saying here in Oak House Church, and it will play like a, it's like a, it's like a movie. It will be like a movie. You will see all that. You will see yourself sitting down and hearing that, this same thing. You will see yourself sitting down. It will be played like a screen on the movie, on the screen. You will be watching it. Have you heard about that uh, pastor from Uganda? Have you listened to this? You know what? He said that thing was played, everything that he did, everything played on the screen like this. There, you see, the thing that you did about when you were a toddler, the record of it is there. If you go back, they will play it. You will see your life, everything from the beginning to the end. <clears throat> no information about you is lost. That's why that man was speechless. When that, when that time comes, when you see it, you will know that you deserve whatever judgment that is going to be given to you. All these things are written in the word of God. So that is why I keep enjoining each and every one of us. Stop. Stop. Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> you will find yourself in the outer court. I mean, outer darkness. But that's not what God wants you. Those who are not born again and all of that, they will be inside the inner darkness with uh, Antichrist and the Lucifer and all of that. They are different. They, depending on the kind of sin you live in when you are here on earth, there is a portion for them. 
So, but if you don't want, <coughs> excuse me, if you don't want to have this kind of experience, what do you do now? Follow these steps. I am begging you. I am pleading with you. We've said this several times. On Sunday, you have now come to church. They share the grace now. You drink coke and drink mineral and gist and talk and then crack jokes and then you go home. The next time they're going to see you will be on Sunday or maybe on Thursday. You come and warm the chairs. When you finish, you go home. You will find yourself in the outer darkness. I'm not telling you my mind. I'm not telling you my opinion. I'm telling you what is written in the book. The Bible says the book will be open. And everyone will be judged according to what is written in the book. That book is the Bible. The book of life. A recap. How, what we are dealing with is, how may I know, <coughs> excuse me, how may I know what God has called me, Fred, to do? I was born like you. I grew up like you. Every one of us. I had different things in my head and all that. Me, self, I consider myself as a failure in life. I was afraid of my shadow. But then I got born again. And everything starts or started. You cannot find your place in Christ until you come to Christ. That is why he said that we are work, God's workman. He created in Christ. It is in Christ you find your call or your calling. It is when you are in Christ, when you are born again, you become a member. Then you discover the reason why God created you. Everyone, the Bible says concerning Jeremiah, he said, before I formed you, I knew that before you enter inside your mother's womb, I've already ordained. It's not when you are born that before you enter, your, before your father and your mother came together to, to get married and then give birth to you, God has already planned. He knew you. The same thing Paul was saying. He said, before God separated me from my mother's womb, he has ordained me this way. It's not the day you are born that you are, your destiny has been ordained before you, were, before you came into this world. There is a purpose for each and every one of you. And it is in that area that God blesses you. He equips you. The grace, the heaven opens. The rain comes from that angle. But if you find yourself in a different place, you're not going to get it. Struggle. God doesn't design our life to be struggle here and there and all of that. The reason why we are struggling is because we are a round peg. In a square hole. Some of us are square pegs in a round hole. Some of us are square pegs lying around everywhere. What do you use? Some of us are pursuing career, pursuing job, pursuing whatever, begging from one place to another. Tomorrow you look for another person, you beg, you plead, you do this, you finish, you go to another place. You never have. I have my own friend. His name is Escavia. I don't want to... Anyway, he's my classmate in the school. We graduated from UNN, 1994. That's when I graduated. That's how many years now? 20. He called me two days ago. Guess what he was asking me for? Begging me for money. 29 years ago. Last year, he called me last year. For the first time, I said, ah, how are you? Wow, you know, exchanging pleasantries because he was, we are friends. And we got born again at the same time in the school. We got born again at the same period and all of that. Last year, I can't remember, either last year or last two years, we spoke. The same thing he complained to me this year, two days ago, was the same thing he complained two years ago. That things are very difficult, things are very hard, and all of that. Please, I can't even pay my school my children's school fees. This one not happened, the other one is not happening, and all of that. Yeah, yeah. The moment I opened my desk, the next thing that I said, okay, 
I gathered the money that I had with me then I sent to him. That was the end. Two days ago, I saw his text. I replied to him, oh, Victor, it's been a long time and all of that. The last two days, last night, the night before, I now saw you. I just entered. Yeah, after Thursday, when I came, I went, came back to the house, after the survey, I saw his call, WhatsApp call. So he didn't even have money to call me with normal, it was WhatsApp. I say, ah, oh, Victor, how are you now? He say, man, things are very difficult. Things are very hard. I've not paid my children's school fee. In fact, eh, anything, that's the discussion. I told my wife, I say, see, 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 this kind of thing. What happened? 29 years after. I know people, because if he just wants, that he called me last two years and told me and all of that, fine. But after that two years, 29 minus 2 is 27. 27 years ago, he called me. 29 years later, I mean two years later, he called me again for the same reason. What's happening? And he's born again. He's filled with the Holy Ghost. He talks in tongues. When you are outside of God's will, especially, especially, when there is a call of God in fivefold ministry, you will be frustrated in this life. Anything you like, do. Any way you like, go. Anything you put your hand, you will never see the light of the day. I'm telling you, I experience it. I have observed it in the life of so many people. The choice is yours. Make up your mind what you want. I lay before you life and death. Choose. Me, I have chosen life. What do you choose? What do you choose? How do you choose? How did you arrive at that your decision? How did you arrive at life? Is it by talking? Present your body, a living sacrifice. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. Renew your mind. Find a place to begin with. Start from the known, and then you get to the unknown. And be faithful. Serve another man. If you don't serve, that your own call will not be revealed. Even your own business, you want to go and do. You want to start your own business. You want to start business of your own. It won't work. Because you have not served. Because even when you serve people, you are not faithful in service. It's as simple as that. God bless you, Jesus' name.